back. Are we live? Are we good? Okay, action again. All right, so many of you are talking about Brother Polite's retirement and saying that I quit teaching. I ain't quit teaching. I have to appropriate my teaching time. So what I'll do is also share some of the sessions with my youngest and my oldest children. This is the part of teaching I need to commit. I spent a lot of time teaching the masses and my children have always supported me and they've always been present. But I also now have to give them some immediate attention and time. So I took time out, I retired. I wanna take them all over the world, consume different herbs and drinks and see different fruits that they've never seen here where they reside. And I have to educate them more personally and immediately because they deserve that. So I'm taking time away. I mean, two, three years from now, the black power movement, conscious move, movement is still going to consist of relatively the same people talking about the same things and mad about the same things. I'm not missing nothing, all right? Uh, I'm, I'm into building and progressing, and if I have to do it in my own individual capacity alongside other people in their individual capacity to create a successful collective so we can leave no people behind after the two, three more years that will be wasted with the people subscribing to people who really don't have viable solutions or solutions but don't know how to effectively employ them in real time so we can get a progression going, not just a movement because just because it's a movement doesn't mean that it's progressing. So you're part of movements but are you progressing? You're in motion but are you progressing? So keyword progress. I don't want to digress. We're going to get into our subject matter today. We have our outline. I want to encourage parents to homeschool their children. It's very, very important. The beauty about homeschooling your children is you get to put into the, curri into the curriculum what you feel is suffice to teach your child. But the way that I do it, I find what the youth love to hear the most about is about magic, the ability to materialize their conceptions. Right? So everything that I teach is centered around that principle. Whether it's math, whether it's science, whether it's history, whether it's language. Every time I teach, the source material, the key element that we have to hone in on is the seldom seen majestic spirit that we all have. And as far as being able to materialize our conceptions. That's why we're going to do math. That's why we're going to do science. That's why we're going to do language. That's why we're going to do reading. You may say, how do you make it all into one where it makes sense? Because if your child knows the reason they're doing math is so they can take more control over their life there by being masters of their own destiny, then they'll do the math. If you knew the reason why you was doing science or chemistry class was because you had to fortify your mind, make your consciousness expand in such ways that you'll be able to more properly be able to facilitate or execute your goals. You would definitely indulge into the chemistry, but we have to find a way to make the information relative to the person that's studying it. If otherwise, there'll be a disconnect, and then there'll always be this thing in their mind, why am I learning this in the first place? So I can show you how to keep your children up to speed with the curriculum that all the other children have while wow, making sure they excel. I can build their vocabulary ridiculously. I can take them to different heights. That's what's important. Putting this information and energy into the youth. That's what's important. So just watch a session. This is what we do. And I mean, I got to take you to the type of museums that we go to and we travel to different cities to go to different types of museums. That's what this is about. This is what I got to do in this time in my life because I know I'm brilliant. But damn I don't want to overlook her and her abilities because if I put into her what I wish was instilled into me at an earlier age, it'd have been a wrap. When I got conscious, I was like, damn, though, but I'm missing like 20 years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we all do that. We get conscious and we say, man, what if I had this information when I was in school? This is what I'm working with with my daughter. I want to see what happens if I give my children the information that I came across. And at an age where they have no limitation or very little concept of limitation. This is not about taking away TV time from them. This is about appropriating valuable time to meaningful information that they understand why it's meaningful. If they understand how important the information is in retrospect to who they are as far as their being is concerned, you won't have to strip them of TV. 
they will see the necessity behind it. If they're going to museums frequently and it's engaging, if they're learning different instruments, okay, if you're teaching them the science of music, if you're showing them how to edit video, if you're letting them participate in yoga class, there's a number of things you can do where TV becomes obsolete. But just stripping them of it, you have to supplant the activity. Don't just take the TV away from people. Give them activity and enjoy teaching. Don't make this thing scary where children got to get nervous and uncomfortable because if they get an answer wrong, mommy and daddy's going to be upset. We're not dealing with that. That's the European approach towards education. <clears throat> now, this is my lovely daughter. This is my lovely, lovely daughter. She is 11 years old right now. I just want you to reach your head in and we're going to get ready to do I know she can't wait to walk up all over this board. I promise her at some point in the lesson, even if it doesn't make sense, she's going to be able to tag up on this wall because that's her whole glory. She's doing this lesson right now so she can get to touch this wall. She don't care if it's just her name or a shoestring she draws. She has to hit this wall so we have an understanding here. Work with me on the metaphysics and all other stuff, and then you can hit this wall and do whatever you want to do. So she's going to graffiti it up and do everything. We don't let her do that now. She's going to be somewhere on the street spray painting. I got to get in trouble right now. I don't want to get in trouble, okay? Now, go ahead, baby. Uh, read your heading, and let's see what we are. Name, my eyes are to Date, October 17, 2018. Subject, matter. Language, metaphysics, and motivation, time, 11.45 a.m. <laughs> Beautiful. And I always tell her, you know, I, I said, we're going to record our session today. She said, okay, let me make sure <laughs> I'm good for the camera. Let me say this <laughs> words over. I'm like, this is about reality, right? This is not reality TV per se. This is about reality. I'm like, if you make an error, it's okay. We have... This is about teaching your children. If it comes out too perfect, then people will be like, man, he just got a bright daughter. My child go, shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> this is it's just real. You know what I'm saying? So we've got to make this real. So errors have to get caught live on camera. I'm not going to feel like, hey, my daughter can't read that good because she made a mistake. Now i got to, you know, treat her like the Jackson 5, take it to the back. Man, that word is motivation. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to do that. You feel me? So, I, I love her though, because she, she's a superstar. So, in her mind, she's like, I'm ready for the camera. Things got to be right. She just like, daddy. You know what I'm saying? So, she's like, no, I'm not doing nothing. Let me make sure I'm enunciating these words right and all. So, I'm like, man, I love you for that. But I'm letting you know you're entitled to make errors, if that's what we want to call it, because this is a growing process for the people out there. I want y'all to grow. Okay? So... <clears throat> Tell them how you feel about homeschool before we get into the session. It feels good. Freedom. <laughs> it feels fun. <laughs> Tell them what you like about it. I like reading because sometimes I'll just make a book club for myself. Get like five or four books, read it myself. <laughs> <laughs> and That's try true. to get it all on the same page. So like, as soon as I'm on a 25 page, I'll go on the other book to go on a 25 page. <laughs> <laughs> and then I like because we live close to everything so I would like to take a walk to the library and read some books my baby is such a beast <laughs> such a beast and so she also gets her friends and formulates these book clubs and <laughs> you know balls out buys the books like hey you know this is your book this is my book <laughs> She goes in, this is what you're going to read. Like, she's a Leo like myself, so she kind of forswore that. You know, she has strong leadership genes. But she's a great person to have a friend at her age because she will encourage you to promote literacy in your community and in your household. Because um, like, if I get tired of watching shows, I was like, there's nothing to do. And I got books. I can act like I'm acting. <laughs> Inside that, I can be the character that's acting, reading the book. Yeah, that's powerful stuff. You're amazing. And I tell you, you don't know how amazing you are because the, our brothers and sisters that are coming across some strife in their life, mm -hmm. you are not around them. So sometimes you don't even know how to attest to your own brilliance until there's a contrast, until you see other people who are just as 
filled with potential as you are, but just having some struggles or don't have the right educational tools or the right support system. So it's going to take a while when you talk to people for you to realize. Like when people talk to you, they go, wow, man, oh, she's so amazing. Daddy, what are you talking about? Like, isn't everybody amazing? Yes, everybody is amazing. This is true. Everyone has amazing in them. But how we bring it to the surface is the difficult part. Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> I like so far, like, I would watch my show and then I would also want to read a book at the same time. So I would like. <laughs> this is true. Because I would watch my show and be like, yep, okay, I'm going to read it real fast. Because every time it goes on, I'll watch TV. As soon as you go on commercial, I'll be reading my book. Yeah. <laughs> and it comes off, I'll be watching the show. And you know, she'll be in the house real late in the night or in the hallway or whatever. <laughs> With a circle of yeah. books on the floor, <laughs> attempting to read three, four books at a time. <laughs> like she has a test or something in the morning. <clears throat> you know, it's hard to even give her certain types of lessons because she's enforcing the lessons on herself. So I'm like, you know what? You got your own reading class. Her mom just gives her the books or buys the books. That you got reading class. You'll teach yourself reading class. We will do all the other stuff. I'll do the math and the history and all that stuff. You obviously got reading in the headlock. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I'll make a dance, I'll be reading while dancing, so it's like, hey, and then I'll be reading. <laughs> so, yeah. I love it, it's fun. That's good, that's and good. It's, it's, there's probably no one like me who loves to read and just like to watch TV. That's me every day, but I also like reading, because TV will get boring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's some people out there, you know, and when you meet them, y'all, you, the group of y'all is going to do something amazing. So, I want you to... Give them one of your affirmations. Okay. Here we go. Hold on. I gotta get this in. Definitely TV ready, this girl. Okay. So give them one of your affirmations. I am using my consciousness to manifest my goals. Wow. Love it. That's a powerful affirmation, <laughs> yes. And then what we do, we pray in that manner. But the way we pray, we make sure we do what? I say, Halana, I sit. Yeah, so this is how we pray, right? <clears throat> People say, pray to who? Pray to what? <laughs> it's not that deep. We understand that all is mental. We are part of the mind of all. Like my brain and my heart. That's right, the brain and the heart. And we realize and that. And make sure you um, get in the right place because you'll fall your heart. I feel it now. <laughs> yeah, before she's like, I'm not alive. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, calm down. I'm like, do a few jumping jacks and it'll be a lot easier. Trust me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So she feels her. She's like, okay, there's a pulse. I can't feel it there. There's some other places we can check and see if you're alive. All right? <laughs> so she has her hand on her brain, figuratively, and her heart. And the, it's just the motion, it's the process to understand how to channel our thoughts so we understand that the brain and the heart is connected to each other and that our ancestors will pull the brain out the nose and discard it when a person died, but they would save the heart, put it even in a canopic jar. And we understand that the word heart, which is id in ancient Egypt, and we also find it in Hebrew as id and or lay, because Hebrew has two different ways to identify the heart. One is the figurative and the other is the actual. So they have the heart as in the one that bleeds. And then whenever they say things like, am I or lave, if or lave. And then in comedic science, the word for heart, ancient Egypt, is if. And the, it literally means mental, intellect, thoughts, conceptions. They appreciated this part of the body as being responsible for thoughts all right oh there we go we back on <laughs> sorry about that family uh oh are we good yeah we back okay Woo! i'm sorry about that you just can keep him right just steady don't even move after this point you know i was about to put it on there internet to see <clears throat> but yeah so the heart and the brain is connected to each other by way of a network of nerves called the vagus nervous system and yeah, for the more physical attributes of life, as far as thinking is concerned, go for the brain, okay? Communicate ideas and 
how to move, or nay, nay, <laughs> Melly Rock, all that. Like, the brain is doing all that. We're not going to put that on the heart. But as far as the emotional conviction that comes from that, whoa, that's coming from the heart. Okay? So, go ahead, baby. So, like, if I'm dancing and I hear a new song, I don't know what to do, but I'll try to do the same dance, and then something will pop up from my brain. And then I'll do a different dance, and I'll end up like this. This is a fact. So that's kind of what he means. This but is definitely what I mean. This is definitely <laughs> what I mean. You know, you're teaching too. Let's go in. So, all right. So our subject matter today, one more time, baby, is what? What's our subject matter? Name, my album. Well, let's just go to subject matter. Day, October 17th. Let's just go to subject matter. Oh, sorry. <laughs> let's go to subject matter. Subject matter. <laughs> Language, metaphysics, and... Motivation. There we time, go. Time, We don't need the time. I only, not, you know, for real, this is important. Okay. I'll go, I'll Follow go. instructions. I don't want the whole thing. I only want what I ask you. Tell us what the subject matter is. I shouldn't have to say only. <laughs> I want the subject matter. Tell the people what the subject matter is. And they don't need the whole head. Language, metaphysics, and motivation. Okay, that's what we want. <laughs> instructions are always very important. You shouldn't just do whatever we want to do. That's very important. Um, my daughter is so brilliant, she just has in her head what she wants to do and what she's going to get done. <laughs> and sometimes, despite what I told her to do, she got in her head, and he, they need to hear everything. And we need to do it all over again. We got to do it all over again, Claus. Like, even if she's reading and she makes one mistake, then it's like, read the whole thing over, even if it was two paragraphs. We have to do it all over again, Claus. So sometimes, that's the approach. When it's not necessary. It has to be perfect for me. <laughs> you know, she's meticulous. Say the word, baby. Meticulous. There you go. She's meticulous. That's what that is. So, let's give them the affirmation again. Give them the affirmation. Okay. I'm using my consciousness to manifest my goals. There we go. So, what does this mean? We're using our consciousness to manifest our goals. What does this mean? How does it make us feel? What does it mean to you? You know, I'm always telling her about the ability for her to create what she wants out of her mind and put it right in front of everybody for all of us to be a witness. So this has to be what we put forth. So when we do this, and I say, Kalana Ashut, that just means let us pray. So I say, Kalana Ashut, and we do the affirmation. I'm using my consciousness. Manifest my goal. There we go. And that's the first thing, and then we do what? We put it right out there. And that's just a vision, it's just a vision. And people say, what is that though? It's whatever we want it to be. It's mine. You do it your way, we do it our way. You see, everyone don't have to follow things the same way. This is consciousness, okay? This is consciousness in its most purest form. We can do what we want with it. It is ours and it is yours. It don't belong to me, it don't belong to you. All this I am, all can, I can, all does I do. I can see this part of all and fail as an individual. Okay? I can't add to all, because if I did, where would I get it from? I can't take from all, because if I did, where would I put it? All is I am, all can, I can, all does I do. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? These affirmations gonna keep you intact. You think this was just a, a lot of y'all sleeping and think this is just a homeschool thing. Oh, I don't need that. I'm 40 something years old. You need this homeschool program. <laughs> you, know what I'm you need this homeschool program because we have to operate with our limitations. The reason why I got so far in my life is because I create the world that I'm going to live in several times before I live in it. So when I do live and I do apply, it's like almost natural. All right? So today, we always deal with metaphysics, but again, by metaphysics, what do we mean? Classical physics is the mother of all physics, right? It's the ground, the foundation. Anything that goes past classical physics is considered beyond physics because it was beyond people's comprehension at a certain point in time when classical physics was all that they had as a tool. So, meta means beyond physics. It doesn't mean, oh, we can't prove what we're talking about scientifically. No, metaphysics simply means the physics that comes after classical physics, the science, any science that comes after 
classical physics disposition and understanding is metaphysics. It just means it's beyond classical physics. Simple stuff. It has nothing to do with being spooky. And as my daughter understands, magic always has a scientific perspective. There can be illusion being applied through magic, or there can be a great deal of science being applied that people render as magic because of failure or lack of understanding to understand how things operate or how that person facilitated. But we will never be in a space where something has taken place or transpired and we can accredit it to just chance, correct? There's always a reason behind whatever takes place. So today's subject matter for you today, baby, is placebo and placebo. Do you know these words? No problem. Yeah, because if you did, then I don't have to scratch that and sort of be lesson. All right? So today we're going to deal with placebo. But, matter of fact, you can write it because we got to find some writing time for you. Go ahead. Placebo. I'll tell you how to spell it. Don't, don't get crazy. Yeah, but that you have to set the word before I do Placebo. P. L. Maybe we got to do a dog. Come on. A C E B O. You know I write so high that you got to stretch. You can write like right where you are. Here, take this black marker. Let's speed it up a little bit. This is a live stream. Okay. Yes. Placebo. P. L. A. C. E. B. O. Her lessons always have new vocabulary words. You're not learning if you're not learning the new words. Like, I don't know how you can learn anything and not pick up new words in the process. That's weird. We will not do nothing weird. Not in that capacity. Okay? And then you have nocebo. Nocebo. Let's look at that. Nocebo. So you got placebo and you got nocebo. Look at that. Go ahead. Write it how you see it. Write it how you see it, baby. It's very good market penmanship, I may add. It's very good. Okay? Low case that B. You don't need a big B. Give me a low case B. Give me a regular B. There you go. Looks a little like a six. Make the back straighter. Come on, B. Perfection. That's what we're teaching, right? Yeah. Yeah. Give me a bigger circle. Big go. Big go. Big. Now that's a placebo. Before was a plus six, yo. It was a oh, plus six. That was plus <laughs> Plus six, yo. But now it's placebo. All right? So, we're dealing with placebo and nocebo. What is this? We always talk about consciousness. Mm -hmm. And we talk about how we, what? What are we doing with our consciousness? I am, come on, give me the assertion. Give me the affirmation. I'm using my consciousness to manifest my goals. There you go. Your goals or your goals? Goals. Oh, so you want to manifest goals? No, you crazy? <laughs> hey, just enunciation is key. Somebody will go out there and use their consciousness and certainly manifest some goats. Next thing you know, they're selling milk to the black community, goat milk at that, and now we got a whole bunch of other issues. So we want to make sure we're using our consciousness to manifest our goals. Goals. There you go. There we go. You know, one thing saying goals either, like, you know, it's breezy shining over here. So, okay, we want to be good at it. Okay, so placebo, placebo. We're dealing with metaphysics. We're also dealing with language. Language is so very important. Okay, so, and it's always about motivation. If we're not motivated by the information, then what are we doing learning it in the first place? So, motivation in metaphysics is part of everything I teach. Whether it's math, whether it's science, whether it's history, doesn't matter. This is where my heart is at right now, family. Forgive me. When I said I retired, it didn't mean I was going to stop teaching. It's who I'm going to direct the energy towards. I'm dealing with, with the youth right now. And I guarantee you, you sit in for my classes with the youth, you will learn. I guarantee you. Because I don't baby the information. I don't goo goo ga ga to the children. I know they can pronounce these words. I know they can remember this information. So why play games with them? I don't play games with the children, man. I'm going to give them what I know they can handle. And yeah, there might be some learning curves. Or yeah, maybe these five-syllable words may be a little intense sometimes. But we'll get over the hump. 
It'll become part of their conversation because it's relevant to their everyday lives. Placebo and placebo. I'm gonna give you some videos so you can look this up because I always stress to my daughter, whenever I teach you something, pursue the facts. I don't want you to just believe me because daddy sounds like he's smart. I always tell her, you gotta do the research on this information. I'm gonna send you some research. I want you to find something yourself, but I always tell her, just don't believe me. But believing is the first part. So you believe that I'm gonna tell you the truth right now about this information. Yeah. Then I need her to know. That's it. Belief is important. It's a very strong conviction. It can get you so far. And placebo is a big part of belief. But it's about consciousness. Because we're going to use our consciousness to manifest our goals, right? Mm -hmm. So we're using our consciousness to manifest our goals. We know the heart and the brain is connected to each other. And they have a very unique relationship. Because all of our muscles internally in the form of organs need sugar in order for them to contract and expand to work to facilitate. And when they use this sugar, lactic acid is produced for breaks, and sometimes, you know, it gets tired. Unfortunately, we can't afford to have that lactic acid around our heart, so our heart is not made up of sugar. But the brain on the other end, which is not a muscle filled with a lot of fat, happens to be made up of more sugar than all the other organs. Therefore, we say, man, that's interesting, but if the heart is a muscle like all the other muscles, and all the other muscles is relying upon sugar in order for them to facilitate, how then may we have a heart that doesn't have the sugar? Well, we know it doesn't have sugar because we don't want the lactic acid produced at the end result of a lot of hard work and labor. So the heart is connected to the brain. The brain is made up of more sugar than all the other organs. So now that's its source. So we don't have to have the lactic acid around the heart, but we have it around the brain. You can look up lactic acid later. This is some powerful information, believe it or not. This is going to help you metaphysically in different sessions. Just take the notes. I just had to say it to say it because it can be recorded and you can drop you can document what I'm saying. Powerful information. But always remember that the heart and the brain is interconnected with each other by way of the vagus nervous system. I'm just talking real fast because I know they need to hear too. They can rewind, rewind, rewind. I just because I got into placebo and I know me. I've got so much information I want to share. I'm talking fast so I can get back to the point. I just wanted to throw that in there because that's important information. We go over this information already. I, it wouldn't suffice to go over every single thing that I go over with you because then we wouldn't get to the subject matter. I just want to give that to them and get them caught up in what we talk about. Okay? But I have to make sure she understands she can be a master of her destiny. She is a master of her destiny. And that's why we use I am. That's why I am is prefixed to our affirmations because it's subjective. So we transcend the object world. And we take it to the mental realm where it's subject to our point of view. It's subject to our discretion, to our opinion, to our vision. That's what we mean by subjective, right? Because the objective is about the objects. So sometimes when we meditate, we objectively meditate. We see the apple, we taste the apple, we feel the apple, we see the color of the apple. Other times we just deal with the sensations and not the apple itself. We deal with the satisfaction of the digestion. We deal with the, oh, the hunger has been satisfied. The craving has been placed. The, the, the feeling, the tingle, the nerves, the enzymes, the secretions. So we can go subjectively, we go objectively, we practice both. Why do, is prayer so very important? It's because we're sending the call out to the universe. Our mind is part of that mind. And we're just simply saying, these are the things that I want in this lifetime. These are the things... We never really want, we always have, pardon me. These are the things that we have. I just need it to be made manifest. We always know we had, we never in a state of need. Words are very powerful. Depending on how you use them, it'll alter your reality. So my daughter is never in a state of need, right or wrong? Right. You always have, right or wrong? Right. You always have. The only difference is, we have it all mentally. The mental plane, you have it all. Now we just have to find out how to make it materialize. We never in a state of need. We've been born with all the resources in the form of our potential. Now we just have to use those tools in the form of our resources, our potential, and find clever mental ways to present it before the world so it can be at our disposal, so it can be shared with the rest of humanity. It's our responsibility because everybody's mind isn't as strong as ours. So this may sound like a bunch of mumble jumbo. This is lies that you know you can't just create what you want out of the universe. You can't live in the house that you saw you was gonna live in one day before you saw. 
Nah, this is all true. I'm doing everything I ever wanted to do, where I wanted to do it, before I could actually give you a specific location. I seen it. And when other people doubted me, I didn't allow them to impose their doubt in me. I didn't take it in. I didn't consume it. I blocked it. Psychic self-defense. I protect my soul. Etymologically, you look up the word soul. It means psyche. It means mind. So I'm protecting my soul and I protect my mind. We're going to get into etymology today. Very important word so we know what we're saying. <coughs> spirit is what? Breath. Oh, that's all spirit is? So what's the Holy Ghost in the Bible? If you look up Holy Ghost in the Bible, what you'll find is the word holy means true. And ghost that's being used is pneumonia. Pneuma, as in pneumonia. As in lungs. So the Holy Ghost is the truth of the lungs. It's about how deep you breathe in and what you take from life. That's why it says, God blew his breath in his man, man became a living soul. He blew his nefesh chayim, is what it says in Hebrew, in two yards. Very significant because he's got two hands. God. That's the ideographic and epigraphic meanings. I'm doing it again. That's why I talk very fast. I got a lot of stuff in my head. I got to probably go back and teach. I'm going to come out of retirement very soon. Trust me. But, um, that's dad. <laughs> That's dad. And imagine what I've been talking to her about. And she'd be like, tell me more. Tell me more. Deal with else. You know what I'm That's so sweet. the Holy Ghost is the holy lungs. That's what it means, or the truthfulness of the lungs. And the truth is, you gotta fill your lungs. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't believe what I'm saying, this is why the words are very important. If you don't believe what I'm saying, and God whose breath into man, man became a living soul in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, he blew his breath into man. What does that mean? But Holy Ghost means lungs, pneuma. The word they use for, for ghosts is lungs. Ooh, well, what does that mean? You think the ancients didn't know nothing? Okay, cool. Watch this. The opposite of inhalation is what, y'all? Exhalation, right? So we breathe and we breathe out. So when we breathe out, that's respiration, right? What's the opposite of respiration? Inspiration. And what does fire mean? To breathe. So we breathe in, in when you inspire. So when God was breath into man, he gave us inspiration. He gave us inspiration. And then when we blew the breath out, that was getting rid of all the things that defiled us, all the junk, all the garbage when we exhale, we respire. So breathing in is inspired. So guess what? Breathing becomes very important to our curriculum. And do we believe in God? <clears throat> not, not we don't even deal with the concept of God. We deal with nature, right, babe? We deal with nature. The principal forces that we see and don't see that affect our livelihood. We deal with nature. Some people miscalculate it as God. And we don't mind. We understand. They need a certain level of knowledge. But it's okay if you call God God. So right. We deal with the universe. We deal with nature. That's what we deal with. Okay? And so we understand that what we think goes out in the universe. What we think goes out in the universe, <laughs> right? And we know that the space is a vacuum. For sound to be produced, there has to be air, so air could collapse on itself to produce sounds. So if there's no air in space, how are we going to make words and pray to God and then reach God? But if we look up the word for prayer in Hebrew, tefillah, it literally means, it's the same word they use for telepathy. <laughs> it means to communicate mind to mind. See, I'm just going into the ancient words. And I'm saying the word Hebrew, but I don't like to say it. Because that's not what the ancients called the language. <laughs> it's just, there was no such thing as Hebrew during that time. Okay? This is some contemporary uh, technology that's been taking place. So we can say ancient Phoetian. Let's say that. Ancient Phoetian from now on. When we go into ancient poetry, we'll see that the word that's being used for prayer means to communicate mind to mind. And this is where you get the word telepathy from in English. That's why etymology is very important. We're going to go into etymology today. Etymology is important so we can see where these ideas are coming from. Very important. So, the reason this is all important, you may ask, again, because I have to make sure when I'm talking to the youth, they don't just take what I say for face value. They don't just believe me because I sound good when I talk and I sound like I know what I'm saying. 
I got to give them words and history and all sorts of proof to let them know this is true. So watch this. Words. Do words have shape, size, color, and texture? Hmm? Did you phone down? Turn it on. I'm going to show you something. So you said, huh? Do words have... Wait. You think phone died? Jay Breeze, I want you to do me a favor. <clears throat> I want you to go online. And I want... Well, am I online? We can do it right now. Gotcha. Here, you hit the Google. Okay. Go. Yeah, Gucci. Okay, watch this. I'm going to, but let's let's see something here. Okay, watch this. I'm going to show you something. What? Is that your connection? No connection. I have no connection here, huh? Okay, hold on. We're going to get you connection. We're going to get connected, y'all. I want y'all to see something. If you hold it, it'll pop up the Wi-Fi. Guess what I should get? Obtain <clears throat> an IP address before we get going. Okay, thanks for the instructions. So I want y'all to know that words do have shape, color, size, depth, smell. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta know these things. You gotta know these things. You gotta know these things. And so, watch this. I want you to write a word that you're thinking about. Write, write something. Write a word that you really like. Let's use the good markets. Where's the black one? Anywhere. Well, follow the instructions. Write a word that you really like. It can represent things you, something you like to do, something you like to eat. I'm gonna write love. <laughs> You know, it's up to you. This, there's no <laughs> wrong answer. The only thing you could do wrong is not put a word on this board. spell something that I don't want to do. Uh, it's really not going to be a good look. Synesthesia. Got it. I actually spelled it right. You know, I never cared about spelling so much until I really got deep into language. It's very important we spell right. Okay. Uh, let me correct it because I get on your case, right? So I got it. Synesthesia. Say this word. Synesthesia. Synesthesia. Okay, this is going to be part of your research, all right? Mm -hmm. So, there are people, when you say three, they see the color red. There are people, when they see the color red, they smell corn. There are people, when they smell corn, they think blue. Now, this is called synesthesia. Now, I told you that words have colors. It's about accessing different points in our mind. With, with science, with the elite do, the people that's in control, mm -hmm. they have a tendency to call things disease, when a lot of times these things are gifts. Like, how can someone have a disease they call autism? How can someone have a disease, still be able to read, write, and talk with everybody else, but the only thing is when you throw a bunch of pennies in their head and catch it back, they're, oh, that was 45. He said, yeah, he's sick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, someone knows how to play the piano. They call him an idiot savant because he never was taught how to play the piano. But we hear the word idiot. So who wants to be an idiot? So freak that. I got gifts, right? But they prefix the word idiot to me because no one else can do it or not many people can do it. 
every 10 people, every 100 people, out of every 1,000 people, this is one of me. I got to be the idiot because you had to learn how to play the piano when I didn't. Something inside me brought that information to the surface because DNA is information, like I told you. And DNA is dumped into you from your parents. And we got it from our parents, from their parents, and so forth and so on. So, so it's really not that hard once we learn how to access information. But first we have to know how DNA is information. Now, everyone that's ever did it before exists within you. That's a head start. So all you gotta do is just stimulate it. So when you was born, you got hungry. The second you got hungry, you knew where to go. You went on your mama's breast and you drank the milk. You ain't say, uh, mommy, get some of that from the supermarket. You ain't do that. You said, you knew where to go. I was in awe. And you know what? I never, I'm like, yo, I ain't delivered no babies before. How's this gonna work? But when you came out, Cut the umbilical cord. It was wrapped around your neck too, because your mom was doing martial arts and they told her that that may happen. So anyway, I was telling her, stop, stop, stop pushing, stop pushing. Because the umbilical cord was wrapped around you. And I took it, I cut it, cut it again, boom, got this joint, held you. What happens when it's there? What, the umbilical cord? Yeah. Oh, well, that's being used to transport nutrients and everything. So that's how you're living off of your mother while you're inside. Okay. That's your life support. You know when people get sick and they're in the hospital, you see all them tubes going through their body? Mm -hmm. You know, life support? That's how you use on life support. But even when you come out and I got that cord, you got like an etheric cord. This is like a cord you don't see that connects you with the universe. And all of us is connected. So it's like a mental reservoir. All of our minds are interconnected to the same source of intellect, same source of mind. We all can tap into it. We all got a connection to the same mental reservoir. Some of us got a stronger connection. Some of us got a weaker connection. It's like Wi-Fi signal. And the more knowledge you get, and the more proof of how great you are and what you have to access that knowledge, the stronger your Wi-Fi signal becomes to connect with the universe. So every time I prove what I'm saying to you, your signal gets stronger to connect with the universe. Because I'm not proving to you if LeBron James is better than Jordan, I'm proving to you every time I teach you, you have the power to create and manifest your goals. I believe you. I know you do. And I'm going to keep working hard to prove it to you. So now I'm going to prove to you words have color, have weight. You feel me? So you're going to look this up. This is going to be for homework. Synesthesia. Say it with me. Synesthesia. You real good. Say it again. Synesthesia. Say it a little faster. Synesthesia. One more time. Synesthesia. There you go. Say it with a little bounce. Synesthesia. Come on. Really rock it. Give me something. Synesthesia. Ah, 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 synesthesia. There we go. There we go. I'm with that. That's it. Synesthesia. So synesthesia. Oh, and every time I say synesthesia, you can really rock. Go ahead. Synesthesia is when people associate smell with colors and words with numbers and they see something else other than what's presented to them. It's synesthesia. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, these people can clearly see that there's colors there. And guess who has synesthesia? Oh, we back on? So, pardon me. <laughs> Come on, stop playing. Come on, man. We, are we going back over here? We going back over here. Okay, are we back on? Yeah, I'm going to be over here, man. All right, we on? Yes. All right, so synesthesia. I said synesthesia. Oh. All right, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, come on, let me ride with me here, synesthesia. We gotta make this thing fun, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead. You know how to do it better than me. Go ahead, synesthesia. Go oh, on, get, get, do it for the camera, come on. Synesthesia. What's the word? Synesthesia. There you go, there you go, Millie Rock too. Anytime you really Rock, you'll be thinking synesthesia through the whole Millie Rock. Anytime you and your friends really Rock, you synesthesia. Like, what? Don't worry about it, say it, synesthesia. That's your whole rhythm because there's so many syllables. It's synesthesia. Right? So you got all them syllables, you gotta really rock the syllables out of that thing. You're like synesthesia. Right? Go ahead, really rock them syllables. Say it. Synesthesia. There you go. Synesthesia. So synesthesia is when people make associations such as 
colors with numbers, right? Mm -hmm. And so they'll see the word love and see that as a color. So sometimes they hear sounds, uh, and the sounds are producing colors. Yeah, they'll think red. They'll hear love and may see blue. They'll hear love, see the word love in the color red. And a lot of gifted musicians like Lady Gaga or Kanye West has some examples, they have synesthesia. A lot of people have it, don't tell people. So guess what? Their concept of making music is beautiful. Think about it. Because they can see the color in words. So they're not matching tones, they're matching colors. Think about that. They may like seeing certain color arrangements in a certain order and it's producing certain sounds. How about that? How about that? Right? So, I want to show you this. Your DNA has bases. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, tyrosine. These are different bases. Okay, that was a word for my sponsors. So, the, if they were to roll out your DNA, it would correspond with the keys on the piano. Do, re, mi, fa, do, la, di, do. Do, re, mi, fa, si, la, di, do. See, this girl. <laughs> Gotta stand me up every time. You know, I, I try to say it low as I got towards the end. Like, you know, I'm about to mess up. She's like, yeah, Danny, I got this. Boom. <laughs> That's your really about why don't you think I got you in the notes? Alright? So we're gonna skip that. This is on forte, she'll do that class. But what I want you to realize is this: that you have what's called organs, right? Mm -hmm. That's an instrument. An organ is an instrument. And then you have what? A heartbeat, right? Mm -hmm. You have heartbeat. You know, beats is for music, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have vocal cords, right? But chords is used for music. Chords are strings, right, for music, right? You have eardrums. Drums is music, right? Yeah. It's an instrument. You know, your skin is your largest organ, which makes you a percussion instrument when you use breathing, when you use air to produce different sounds. So a person that's heavy, you can tell that a person is kind of overweight because of the way they talk, because the human body is a percussion instrument because the biggest organ is the skin. So muscle people be like, yo, you know, you just got it in up in the gym, you feel me? Yeah, you know you can make um, skin stretches. You can make sounds with your hands. This is true, but when you breathe, mm -hmm. your skin, and based on your weight, your tone comes out a certain way. We're instruments. Mm -hmm. Percussion instrument is an instrument that uses air to produce sound in unique ways. So you have eardrums, you have organs, you have heartbeats, you have vocal cords, and they say it's important to leave this life, what? On a good, watch this, note. Look at that. Leave this life on a good note. And your DNA corresponds to keys in the piano. So life is a song. And then even look at the, look at the word universe. We don't, if we go into etymology, we see the word verse means against. But if we go into it on its more colloquial sense or surface level, Uni means one, right? Uni means one, and then we got what? Verse. What is verse? Like a poem, a hymn, collection of words for a song. So this universe is one poem, one song. We got to get in tune. So we say we got to get in tune, right? We say we got to get in tune with the universe, right? Mm -hmm. And the planet Earth is on a, the eighth octave. This is tones. And, and the Big Bang, which they said created the universe, the Big Bang takes place on micro and macrocosmic levels. So the bang, the, the bang that got you into this world is when the sperm uh, spermatozoa hit the ovum, and that's at D major. The black hole pulsates. The birth of any universe has a black hole that pulsates D major, and the sound is om. I need your lips to tremble. That's when you know you're doing it real good. Is a mouth 
constricting of the throat, very mild, and then your lips are going to tremble. You should go, ah. I want you to go, ah. I need your lips to tremble. Make sure these things tremble. There you go. Just follow that hand. straight out your mouth, through your lips and out your ears. And soon you just feel a little pulsating in the head. So, the birth of every universe is on. And that's D major. It's an actual tone. So to be in tune with the one song or the one poem, to be in tune with this whole one poem thing, because we're part of the song. Mm -hmm. We gotta get in tune with the song. The problem is, people off beat. The universe is a song. You got people milli-rocking to R&B music. See, the universe got different poems that it sets off in different eras by way of what they call the zodiac. There's different seasons. Different seasons in the universe. Different seasons on planet Earth. And what happens is we have to get in tune. We have to know how to dance and be in rhythm with the universe. Because when we are, we don't have to think much. We just know how to do things. We be thinking when we don't know. Soon you won't have to really think. It's called intuition. Soon you be intuitive. You just know when you should make babies and when you should speak and when you shouldn't speak. And the best time for breathing. And this is called circadian rhythm. See, there's a word for all these things. That's why we need words. It's very important, right? So the universe is one poem or one song. And we have to be in tune with that song. And the way we get in tune with that song is D major. And then there's also the I in principle. I I say that. I There you go. I I And then you got the So you got the I in principle, and you got ohm, which is D major which is what you was birthed to, which is where every universe is birthed to. Is what... Hold on, family. I'm going to see if I can get a different internet for us. Because maybe if I... I'm going to take that. Yeah. Maybe if I can get the internet, a different one. We won't have to worry about... There we go, y'all. Yeah. We back. Oh, yeah. The comments are coming in, so we good. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so someone asked, where's the mathematics? But you gotta understand, music, yeah. once you start talking about notes and everything, we're, seg we're making, seg we're setting way, the segue for the math. Music is math. Take your time. Let me explain something to y'all. Let me explain something. Because you see, now, let me just address some of this. Where's the mathematics? This is the math. Oh, we don't put these into numbers in a different session, but today is language, metaphysics, and motivation. You're asking for the math. This is not the math session. But this is going to segue into the math when the time comes. Because you cannot deal with notes, music, tones, and not deal with mathematics. So we're going to learn about notes and how to deal with that. You see, this strategy to teaching is all about strategy. Are you having fun, baby? Yeah. You learning? Okay. Synesthesia. Synesthesia. Millie, right? Here we go. Here we go. Synesthesia. So, let's do this. How we manifest our goals. Yeah, we have to have a very strong mind, right? But first of all, you got to know how to use your brain. It is a component. Even though consciousness facilitates by way of the heart and everything like that, we got you. Where does the brain fit in? Well, we're talking about the lateralization of the cortical areas of the brain, namely the cerebral left and the cerebral right hemisphere. I know I dropped out of school. Pay me no mind. Just look up the information and make sure it's true. Okay? Because some people want you to be credentialed in order to say the truth. Since when do you need credentials to teach the truth? So long as I give you a reference point, you can look it up. So we're talking about the lateralization of the cortical 
functions of the brain or the regions of the brain, namely the cerebral left, the cerebral right hemisphere, and the left cerebral hemisphere is the analytical part of the brain. Analytical, say it with me. Analytical. 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 There you go, that was better. Analogical. Say analogical. So right brain is analogical. So, this is what we're going to do. Analytical, left side of the brain. Mm -hmm. This is where you do your math, science, language, and reading. Your math, science, language, and reading. Stay over here. Math, science, and language, and reading takes place on what side of your brain? Five. Yeah. There you go. Now, that's your analytical. Say it. Analytical. Analytical. Nope. You keep saying D. And And not. Analytical. 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 There you go. The analytical side of the brain is on the left hand side. Right. Put it down. Now, the right side of your brain is analogical. 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 Touch your analogical part of your brain. Why are you going over there? You got two sides of your brain. One was the analytical. So where's the analogical? Here. There you go. Don't worry about it. It's okay. <laughs> scary me for a moment. We had a scary moment. Don't worry. Analogical. Okay? This is new information, but never let new information take you out of character, of your sense of mind. Okay? Mm -hmm. Don't, you're not being tricked by daddy ever. So you could just always flow and rest assured, daddy ain't never trying to trick me. Analogical. So touch your analytical part of your brain. Analytical. Wow. And what takes place over there? Math, science, language, and reading. Anytime you try to do any of that, it's on the side of the brain. Now, Put your hand down, mm -hmm. get the right hand up on the analogical side of the brain. And over there is emotion, it's music, it's love, it's passion, it's vision, it's intuition. All that is over here. That's called analogical. Now, here's the trick. People say, you have more emotional, you're on your right brain. Mm, no. We haven't really accessed the emotional body. That's the problem. That's why we're having problems creating things and manifesting things on this universe. Because we haven't tapped into the actual emotional part of our being. I'm a it. Math, science, language, and reading over here, right? Mm -hmm. When someone yells at you, what do people do a lot of times? They, they yell at you and make you feel bad. What do that person normally do after that? Slap. Probably slap when they yell back. Or they scream, right? Mm -hmm. Now, people say, man, that's all emotional. That ain't even emotional you. That's still left brain. You know why? Because when someone yelled at you, you decided, am I going to yell back or what? How loud am I going to yell back? Then you yell back, you verbalize. So what just happened? You calculated. You calculated. You, you thought of, what, why is this taking place? Oh, this person want to hurt me? I'm going to hurt them back. If they keep talking to me, then what I'm going to do is hit them back. This is calculation. That's mathematics. Then you say something back to them. Stop that, mother I don't like you, you be da 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 da. You start cursing them out. You decide what words you're gonna use. That's language. You decide how loud you're gonna go with that. So that's all left brain. What it, most of what you call an emotion is still left brain. Okay? It's still left brain. Let me charge up. Whew! Good. Most of what you calling Daddy. <laughs> all this knowledge give me fatigue. Okay? Go ahead, you sit down. See, this is why you gotta work out so you can stand up for long hours to teach. Alright? So this is all free, man. You better stop playing. You need to donate towards Matt. That's what we're gonna do with Go for me because she's responsible for all the free knowledge that's gonna be coming your way. That's amazing because this is the information that's gonna make you successful. But see, oh, no problem. When people ask what makes you successful, when people ask what makes you successful, that certainly is an answer. <laughs> when people ask what makes you successful, and I tell them these things, like, oh, man, polite man, just show me how to make money. I'm like, this is how the money get made. And first of all, you gotta know what your emotional body is in the first place. You're touching yourself and don't even know your real body. What you're calling the emotional body is still the left brain. So that means, what is the emotion? We're gonna say that for another class. 
You're not even tapping in. The emotional you is the one that can make things manifest on this plane. The tools are all on this side of the brain. You don't really use them. They trick you into thinking you're using both sides, and you're not. What you're calling an emotional response is still an analytical response. Because it was premeditated, it was calculated, and it was verbalized. None of that has anything to really do with the right brain. How you, the way you get impacted from doing all that, yeah. But then that's an involuntary function that precipitates the cortisol. That makes it hard for you to remember and hard for you to learn. Because those are stress hormones. More information than just going to just throw it out there. I don't even know what to really rename this thing. Because this thing is just all over the place and dope. You know what I'm saying? I could have just sat in, I could have just did a lecture and just said, yo, knowledge on anything. No questions. Listen, let me talk and see what I do when I question and answer myself. But why was this important? Because I told you that words, because today's lesson is about language, metaphysics, and motivation. Correct? Yeah. So what we learned today is the deep part now. We gonna cool. I had so much more stuff to share too, but I need to really close it out so we can save some lessons. Because <laughs> we gotta take you to the museum. And it's a new museum that I'm taking really? you to. Really? Yeah. Yay, I like museums. I know, it's a, it's a map and science one too. You've never been to this one. Neither I, so Can't it's corny, it is, it is, but we never really been to it. You said it make sure it's not your fault. You know, we, we've been to a lot of museums, so our criteria is pretty high, but this is a mathematical museum, so I'm interested to see how they may have it set off. Let's go now. <laughs> no, we're going to go right after this. You guys are going to go after this. Okay? I'm going to take you to lunch, and then we're going to go to the museum, okay? Mm -hmm. We just got to spend this quality time with this knowledge. Then we're going to get some lunch, mm -hmm. break down the food we eat, and then we're going to go to the museum. It's always a learning experience all day. This is what daddy got to do. Daddy got to put in hours of knowledge. Hours. Okay? And then you got to do essays on everything she learned today. We're going to review this video. Please don't write negative words and obscenities there because my daughter will be looking at it. There's nothing negative about this video, please. Save that, curse me out on another video, but when my baby's here, spare me, please. Okay? I'm not attacking your religion right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But maybe you feel like that too. But this is really, this can empower you from any religion. So, words, right <clears throat> What about words? Spells. You know, they cast spells, right? And you know what? They send people, look, look, spells. It's magic, right? But they use spells. In order to cast a spell, you gotta use words, right? Mm -hmm. So they're telling you that there's magic, so-called magic. We know science, right? Yeah. But they're telling us, and we know that a lot of that science is predicated upon energy facilitation. We know it's energy, right? Mm -hmm. So words have energy, which means they have vibration. So words have vibration. And how do you know words have vibration or weight? Okay. Uh, how do we know that? If daddy was sitting here, look at sad and you walk by, you think you can feel that you need to ask daddy what's wrong? Yeah, I would say, are you okay? Okay, so that means you was impacted, you was touched by the way I was feeling, right? Yeah, because you felt sad. But I, did I say anything? No. Is it possible for me to say nothing and you still feel me? Yes. In fact, don't daddy sometimes say, feel me, at the end of the sentences? Yes. So, <laughs> all right, I'm, gonna, I'm reaching out. I'm reaching, all right? All right, there's part of that one. So, that means words have weight. That means I didn't have to say anything to make you feel something. You just feel it. So if you felt it, it has weight. Right or wrong, people? I just proved it. I don't, don't play me. I prove words have a weight. And some words, depending on how we use it, weighs heavier on us than others. Because I can say I love you and you can feel like, or I can say I don't love you. And those combination of words, that's diction. The way that I use words in certain combinations, that's called diction. Or the way that I say the words, is also called diction. And this is why I told you, when we go to the dictionary, we should focus on how things are said because it's not called a dictionary for no reason. But most people go to the dictionary for the definition. But it's not called a definitionary, it's called a dictionary. So why don't we know much about diction? Very weird. 
and then I can add diction, and then that creates symptoms that's hard to grow out of. But you may not catch that. Boss, add diction. You may not even, we'll talk about that later. This boss, listen, this boy. <laughs> Hashtag boss, okay? Hashtag boss. I don't even think you really realize I don't think you realize. I, it. I don't think you really realize what took place here. But it's okay in the prefix add. I even do this one. You think about this one. But what about like add as an ad hominem? Then what does add mean? But that's a whole. This is smart bars though. This this ain't candy bars. This is you know what I'm saying. This ain't candy bars that you hear rappers about. These are some serious bars. Hit it with the nah. It's not. All right, so we all right. Did, did it again, bro. We got, this is about to get deep. It's about we about to get where we gotta go. I'm really like my addiction. Pause. Think we good? Think we good? She just tricked me. And then we came back. <laughs> On this side, you okay. go. Yeah, but it's all going too deep. I'm just giving it a try. I'm about to just put it. Now, pledge. <laughs> Yeah, well, we're back. Hey, freaky, I'm gonna just finish this up. All right, I started building. I forgot that we had you live. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot we was live, y'all. They would have caught you on that one. Let me see. Let me write something. Whoa, okay. Let me write something real quick. I know, broadcast They like start over. If y'all with it, I keep going in because I got I'm with it. Daddy, let me see <laughs> That's true. Okay, give daddy eight more minutes. And I'm gonna close out, and then I can always begin this another time. Okay, we'll. St then I started over, so let's do it. I'm mad that happened, but good thing I'm, I'm just about the knowledge because I started building. I forgot all about the stream. It came on. Yeah, y'all. <laughs> he, he was going in. He was going in. It's more to come. Yeah, oh, so no, there's more to come. Oh, I was about to say he said, "Oh, what So collaboration, words, spells. Let me just get to this point because the whole thing is just to make sure that we understand that it's an actual fact that you can. Use your consciousness to manifest your goals, correct? Mm -hmm. What's the affirmation? I'm using my consciousness to manifest my goals. Your what? Goals. 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 Go ahead. Say so this happened. I want people to understand. Sometimes you're gonna say words a little different because you develop an accent when you learn different languages. This is also true. But go ahead. I'm using my consciousness to manifest my goals. There you go. Kalana Ashit. Boom. Affirmation? I'm using my consciousness to manifest my goals. There we go. There we go. Synesthesia? There you go. Maybe box <laughs> synesthesia. Y'all, we party into the new word. That's what we gotta do. We got it. Let <laughs> <laughs> me get a new word up there. We gotta party, right? That's what we gotta do. We party. Alright? You know, Miss Dance Moves Daddy gotta learn every time. I keep throwing new words every day. Like, my, my collection's crazy. I start making up dance moves because I got more words than I got dance moves out here. Okay? So, we know that the words have weight because you can feel how someone feels. And if you can feel it, you've been impacted, you've been hit by it, it has some kind of depth. It has some kind of weight. When we say depth, we mean depth like this. That means that there's an impact taking place, there's some weight. So you can feel me if I'm sitting here sad. Well, if I be talking, you can, you, Dad, you all right? That's how you do it, right? Yeah. So words have a weight, they have a vibration. And remember, in order for us to communicate to the universe, we can't just simply pray and say words because the words that become audible, they produce sounds, but the sounds is produced because air is collapsing on itself, but in the universe in space there's no air so there's no air to collapse on itself so the words is moot using words is moot but the vibration you back the vibration corresponds with free I love you Jabrizi oh that's dope <laughs> that, back. that emotion just touched me I'm about to cry I've been impacted the the, the weight on the word it was good dang <laughs> okay we on we on. Okay, so 